nobody sees themselves as a bad person. You know, Zizek has an interesting uh, piece on this, which I'm quite fond of, how people delude themselves into thinking that they're not evil. One is where you talk about Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin believed himself a man of history in the most literal sense. When Stalin killed people, and boy did he kill people, he did so in a kind of depersonalized way. He thought of himself not as a man, but as an architect of historical action in a deeply materialist sense. If anything, it's kind of a perversion of Marxist ideology. He's not a man because there are no men. There are only, you know, the forces of history and the material interests of the classes. Uh, he was simply uh, a tremendously large and powerful gear moving in a great machine. You understand what I mean? Essentially, he depersonalized himself. He was no longer responsible. He was just a force of nature. There was something similar that was actually done in an element, I believe, of Buddhist philosophy that was applied by the Nazis. It wouldn't be the only thing they stole from the Buddhists. The swastika is a Buddhist symbol. But it was the idea of a kind of a cosmic determinism that absolved them of personal responsibility for their behavior. You know? How, how to describe it. It would be if you are an SS officer at a death camp and you shoot someone in the back of the head, you know, a Jew or something, a defenseless person, you know, you can tell yourself you aren't doing that. The universe is doing it through you. You're just a component of a broader, um, of a, of a, a broader system, you know, a, a cosmic, uh, force that, uh, you know, moves through everyone. It's not just, just following orders. It's like the highest order of just following orders. It's, um, it's, it's, you're not just following orders. You are just an instrument of the universe acting on itself. That there are not individuals. There are only extensions of the same system, you know? And in that sense, you know, you can't really kill anyone. You can't do anything. You only live through. That would be considered the ultimate submission to authority. Well, obviously, this is a deeply submissive ideology. Um... But they're Nazis. They're authoritarians. It makes sense. This is a deeply authoritarian kind of spiritualism here. Not freeing at all. Actually, quite the opposite. Surfing the Kaliuga, yes. To refer to what we saw yesterday, yes. Surfing the Kaliuga, this is very similar to that, you know? It's not what you do, it's you ride the wave of the spiritual force that compels human behavior, you know? Yeah, Zen Japanese imperial philosophers were like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zizek said Buddhist justified killing by saying the universe had just found a way to put the knife inside of someone, not that you're personally stabbing them. Yeah, stuff like that. I know it sounds psychotic, but, I mean, it has happened. I have a feeling that a great many of the Nazis who worked at the concentration camps don't feel that they were evil because they feel that there was a great motion in place, you know, a wave of which they were a part, towards a desirable end, and their participation in it was just a a cosmic quirk, you know, just an, just an incidental component of this broader, highly depersonalized system. Now, mind you, this is cope, because these people are individualists under other circumstances. It's not as though these Nazi guards would round up a criminal and go, ah, the criminal did not steal the bread. The bread simply arrived in the possession of the criminal through cosmic... No, 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 no. This was a self-applied depersonalization not a ubiquitously applied one. So again, keep in mind, this is not a coherent or consistent philosophy being applied. It is a way of depersonalizing yourself so that you don't feel personally responsible for the actions you're committing, which you politically agree with the outcomes of, but might personally have qualms about, you know, in a kind of innate or um, intrinsic way. Those are blatant misinterpretations of karma? Yeah, of course they are. But hey, what what religious group doesn't blatantly misinterpret its own philosophy? I hate spiritualism. This is a big part of it, too. You know how soldiers will often champion their ability to do what needed to be done? This was a pretty common thing, especially after Vietnam. Most people, I think, most Americans felt pretty good about their involvement in World War II. Vietnam, not so much, you know. So an innate moral good is assigned to the value of being able to do bad things, even though it's hard. See, it's a kind of um, ethical trickery. 
where something becomes good because it is bad. You see? You didn't want to do the bad thing, but you did, and you were able to, and that's hard, which makes it good. It's complete nonsense, really. It's, it's incoherent, ethically. Um, but it's a very common sentiment, especially for soldiers. And cops. Cops as well. Yeah. It's not just about desensitization, it's about making you complicit in the behavior of people worse than you. This is one of the ways the Republicans are so good at weaponizing their voter base towards very radical ends. Because if you have a group of Republicans who are, like, kind of latently homophobic, but not great, like, let's say you have the, let's say the majority of Republicans are homophobic in the sense that they don't think that marriage should be between two men or two women, and they think that it's, like, kind of weird, but, like, you know, like, at the end of the day, they, re they respect people's choices. Like, they may think you're going to hell religiously, but, like, politically, you know, they think you should have the right to do that. And I do think that's the majority of homophobia in this country, by the way. But then let's say a small minority of the Republican Party is go going on to say, you know, oh, well, it's not just that they're doing this in their homes, they're actually groomers, and then it goes into the whole all gays are pedophiles thing, and then it's like, well, pedophilia is morally aberrant, you know, we need to lock them up beforehand so they don't do anything to hurt our children. And the initial group of Republicans, if you would just ask them straight up, do you think gay people should be locked up for being gay, would never have said yes. Seriously, a lot of Republicans, whether you they say this or think this, they don't believe that. But if you give them the leading logic, it becomes more and more difficult for them to back off because they're already invested in the predicating logic, you know? You've already got them a couple steps up the ladder, um, which makes it that much easier to bring them up the rest of the way. And if you realize where the ladder is headed, which in this case would be the genocide of gay people, um, once you're already on the ladder, it's a lot easier to keep moving up and a lot harder to just get off it entirely. That's the whole point. Once you get people involved in basic, the basic argument, you see this all the time. Remember how during Gamergate, the prevailing beginning argument was crazy SJW feminist anti-gamers are cringe, and a lot of these people ended up being full-blown neo-Nazis? You take one step at a time, but every time things get a little bit crazier, the only way for you to back off entirely is to realize that all the steps you've taken up until that point have led you here. You're on a trajectory. The inertia carries you, and it takes a hell of a lot more effort to stall that inertia um, than it does to just continue moving in that direction. It is a kind of sunk cost fallacy, though not one people cognitively recognize. It's a subconscious bias. Oh, sorry, one second. I just looked in YouTube chat and I saw, but Bosch is doing the same thing. They are all evil and shit like that. You're replacing something like Jews with something else. Both bad. Yes, I agree. Uh, saying anything is bad is like saying the Jews are bad because all things are exactly the same and nothing means anything. That's what I get for looking at YouTube chat.